Ellie's all rigged and ready to launch for today's day sail. But before I leave, I think I'm going to go check out one of my favorite shipwrecks, the Equator. The decaying remains of the Equator are housed in this shed here in Everett, Washington. The Equator has an interesting history. She's powered across oceans using sails, steam, gasoline, and diesel. She's worked as a coconut trading ship, an Arctic whaler, a Puget Sound tug, and supported the geodetic survey. She also has a connection to a very famous author that you all know. Let me tell you about her. Oh, and it's also said that she's uh, haunted by ghosts. The Pygmy Schooner Equator was built in San Francisco in 1888 for use as a coconut trading ship. She's the last surviving hull of that time period known to exist. We all know the famous author Robert Louis Stevenson. He's the guy that wrote the epic pirate novel Treasure Island, Kidnapped, and the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Well, Stevenson once chartered the equator. He traveled aboard the schooner when it voyaged from the United States to Indonesia to pick up a load of coconuts. Along the way, Stevenson stopped for a time in Hawaii where he befriended the resident king Kalakaua. In 1889, Robert Louis Stevenson sailed from Honolulu to the Gilbert Islands. While he was aboard, he conceived of and began writing a novel called The Wreckers. The trip was the inspiration for Stevenson's travelogue in the South Seas. After the voyage ended, the equator was retrofitted with steam power in 1893 and served as a tender to a whaling fleet in the Arctic Ocean. She was completely renovated in 1923 and served until the mid-50s as a Puget Sound tugboat. Because of her shoal draft, she could get close to shore where other vessels couldn't go, and that's how the equator ended up here in Everett. In 1956, the tugboat equator was decommissioned. The decommissioned tug was hauled to Jetty Island and abandoned along with other discarded vessels where it helped to form a breakwater, protecting the man-made spit of land from erosion. The equator laid abandoned here for about 10 years until, in 1967, a local dentist discovered the boat. He had it hauled ashore, dry docked, and formed a non-profit group called the Equator Foundation. The group was dedicated to restoring the equator to its former glory. They were encouraged when the equator was placed on the National Register of Historic Places on April 14, 1972. And then nothing happened. The nonprofit disbanded and the boat was left to slowly fall to pieces, forgotten by time and restoration enthusiasts. The boat, essentially just a hull, was moved in 1980 to a location at the port's new marina village and then later placed in its current location near the Port of Everett boat launch. In November 2017, the back end of the vintage boat collapsed and hasn't yet been fixed. The schooner, once capable of sailing across the Pacific, once able to brave the frigid waters of the Arctic, now slowly splinters into dust, stripped of its engine and mass. The vessel is now damaged beyond any repair, and any attempt to restore it would be less like setting a bone and more like major reconstructive surgery. Today it sits in the shed on the Everett waterfront next to a plaque noting its historical significance.
The equator is said to be haunted. Reportedly, dancing lights appear on top of the hull in the night. Psychics have reported that the dancing lights are in fact the ghosts of Robert Louis Stevenson and Hawaiian King Kalakaua. Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island brought us pirates, treasure maps marked with an X, schooners, the black spot, tropical islands, and one-legged seamen carrying parrots on their shoulders. When I close my eyes, I can imagine Stevenson writing his novels while sailing the South Seas aboard the equator. The equator may be crumbling away, but the story she inspired will live on. I hope you enjoyed our visit to the equator, and now it's time to go for a day sail. Nice little late knot breeze out here today. You should be out here.